Okay, so I'm gonna show you some Rignans, eucalyptus Rignans um, seedlings I've got just germinating. So here in New Zealand, which is Southern Hemisphere, it's 29th of August. These have just literally come up in the last few days. Um, I planted these just over a month ago. I think it was uh, 22nd of July I planted them. So I found July here is the best time to plant eucalypt seeds. Um, it's sort of middle of our winter and normally takes them, normally most will germinate end of August or beginning of September if I plant them in July um, and I get pretty good pretty good germination rates. You can see the ones here have come up pretty thick. So for you in the northern hemisphere you can do the maths on that and um, subtract six months and I would say that's the best time by far to plant eucalypts and I never stratify any of the species I grow, I've never stratified any of them um, and I've had no trouble with germination at all planting out in late winter um, even into early spring. It just becomes a bit harder in spring because you have to be a bit more uh, vigilant with watering. Winter's quite good in that you get your, get your uh, potting mix nice and moist, um, do your planting and then you can forget about them until they come up. You do it in spring, you've got to make sure you keep them moist otherwise they'll, they won't come up. Um, so I'm just going to go back and show you how I plant these. I've got a technique I use. So I don't grow a lot of trees. Um, I grow them in pots and I'm not a great fan of doing hard labour so I don't um, germinate them and then transplant them. I plant the seed directly into the pots which is easier um, and also I don't disturb their roots so there's no transplanting, no disturbance of the roots um, and that works well for me. I've it, it's the only downside to it is it is a bit wasteful of seeds so you have to make sure you plant enough seeds in each pot that you're going to be guaranteed to get um, at least one plant otherwise you're going to be replanting them or mucking around with trying to transplant between pots which I have done and, and you can do but it's just a bit of a pain so I always um, and I'll show you here how I plant I'll usually get a pot with potting mix fresh potting mix, make sure it's moist um, so if I've got really dry potting mix I'll normally immerse it in a bucket of water or a tub of water and make sure it's properly moist and drain it off for a day or so I'll just make a small depression with my finger um, only needs to be a few millimetres deep then I will take a packet of seeds, so I've got some seeds here, these are eucalyptus regnans um, these are some that I collected uh, according to the packet in January of 20, 2020, so it's now August. Um, the ones I showed you germinating, I planted in July, so they're not they're not very old. I collected these from a tree at the side of the road, um, which is where I get most of my seeds, just from the specimens um, that I see out and about, and usually try and find good individuals or a good group of trees and um, just break off a branch or grab a bunch of seed pots and you'll have a mountain of seed. It's pretty straightforward. Um, so what I'll normally do is let's have a look at some of these seeds and pull them out. So Regnans are an ash. The ash and stringy barks are a bit more tricky in that it is can be difficult to distinguish the chaff which is the seed that hasn't been um, fertilized from the true seeds. Um, you can see regnance isn't too bad. You can see the bigger the seeds, the true viable seeds are bigger and oblong brown, um, whereas the chaff is smaller, slightly smaller and lighter brown. So what I'll normally do is I will get my packet and sprinkle a few seeds. I'll try and make sure that I see at least three or four true seeds going into the depression but often I'll put in more. If I've got plenty of seed I don't care if I've got 10 or 20 
seeds coming up in a pot. Um, and then I will cover those with vermiculite. Um, that's just the method that I happen to use because I get good germination, but it doesn't matter. You can use potting mix, seed raising mix. I've used sand in the past. It doesn't really matter. As long as it's something nice and light that the seeds can penetrate. And you don't want to have more than a few millimetre above them because they are tiny. But you will be surprised from what depth they can uh, germinate. So those, the ones we're looking at now, I planted in July, 26th of July, so they're a month, one month, one week, roughly it's taken them to germinate. And it's just starting to warm up here, so we're just uh, about to come to spring, like I said, today's the 29th, so September in a couple of days, the days are just starting to warm up, I think we've got 20 degrees Celsius forecast for tomorrow, which would be... The first time we've had a 20 degree day since probably April or May. Um, so we sh if we get a few days like that, we'll start to get some good growth here. So I'll make sure these seedlings are in direct sun for at least half the day and get moist. So what I normally do these now that they're germinating, um, and I've obviously got a pretty good strike here. They've come out quite thick. Um, <clears throat> so at some point you have to thin them out, so you want to be left with one in a pot. So what I'll do is get um, some fine scissors. I use my Leatherman with the scissors on that because they're very fine and I can see what I'm doing. Or nail scissors would work just as well, or any scissors, small scissors with a fine tip, um, or even nail trimmers. So what I'll do, normally I would wait till these are a little bit bigger and see which individual is growing best because you do get a lot of inbreeding with eucalypts so um, now I'm not sure how scientific this is but uh, I will try and pick out the best individuals even when they're first germinating in the hope that you're not that, that the inbred individuals or the runts will be the smaller ones so normally I would let them get another week or two bigger before thinning them out because these all look the same when they're germinating and they're a bit more fiddly to thin but uh, I'll show you my technique, which is just to use scissors to nip the um, nip all the leaves off, basically. I, I don't mind leaving a stalk, because it won't sprout and regrow. I'll just nip off the top leaves and uh, leave the stalk behind undisturbed, so I don't bother pulling them out. I just leave them in there to die off, and um, they don't do any harm to the, the, the one you leave to grow. So normally I... I might do one or two thinnings, either I'll thin them all out and leave one, or sometimes I'll thin out and leave two um, a distance apart to grow on just in case um, one dies off or slugs and snails get them. And then when they get a little bit bigger, I'll thin again to leave just one. So there you have it, there's um, some regnans germinating, and uh, how I pop them up and how I thin them out.